Okay, happy full moon, happy super moon, happy blue moon. It's a blue moon because it's the second full moon in the month of August. And it's a super moon because the moon is closest to the earth on its orbit. And it's a full moon in Pisces. And we're in Virgo season. Welcome, I'm Hagar and welcome to Mama Mandala. So I'm not an astrologer, I'm more of a mythologist. I love working with archetypes. I love bringing them into the body. And I love considering how we can play with archetype in our lives. So hello. So the full moon is in the sign of Pisces when the sun is moving with the constellation of Virgo. So Virgo is the archetype of organization and order and meticulousness and details and bringing things into reality and organizing them. And then Pisces is the big dreamer. Pisces loves the watery realms where things are um, shape-shifting and traveling through imagination and visions and, and, and kind of like an expansive view and a broad perspective, not only on what's here, but what is possible and where things could go. So Pisces takes us, it's the, actually the last sign on the zodiac wheel before the journey begins again. And, and it's, it's time in the year is in February, March. So it kind of ushers us from winter into spring. And then Virgo ushers us from summer into fall. So both of those, both of those signs, both of those archetypes close a, a circle and take us into the beginning of a new one. Virgo is the last sign in the realm of the individual. So it marks the completion of the journey through the personal and the individual. And then Pisces is the last sign in the zodiac wheel, but it's also the last sign in the in the realms of the collective, and it very much cares for the way that there is something in us that is universal. There is something in the individual experience that is not only connected, but is woven in and in, is inseparable from the everythingness, from the, from the cosmic, right? So Pisces is the part of us that knows that we are a part of something greater than ourselves. And it's also a part of us that takes us there, that in a way submerges us in the waters of the infinite and then merges us with the oneness, with the way that we are inseparable from everything else. Virgo helps us in a way if we want to play with the two because I love I love the full moon because it gives us an opportunity to play with two archetypes and Virgo grounds this knowledge and organizes it and says, well, how is this going to help me with my reality, right? Because with Pisces, we can travel into that infinite realm and kind of get lost there, kind of get in a, in, a, in a space of spaciness in a way that we are um, in dreamland and, and somewhat disconnected from what's actually here, from, from how... Um, you know, we got to go pick up our kids from school and get get some food in our bodies and and, you know, take care of the of the house and clean it up and organize it and make food and like the day to day living. So in a way, Pisces is the archetype that takes us into this broad, expansive experience of life. And Virgo says, well, then let's create a structure to hold it. Let's, let's, let's give it form so that we can do something with it. Other than, otherwise, what's the point? With Virgo, we look at the little details and, 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 the, and the structures that can support life for ourselves and for more than ourselves. And with Pisces, we connect to, we connect to our interconnectedness. We bring ourselves into this place where 
it's not even necessarily connection, more of a melting into the way that we are held in the vastness of the universe, right? So with, with, when, when the moon is full in this dreamy archetype, we get to ask, well, how is this going to be? helpful, this knowledge, this insight, this submerging in dream, how is this going to be helpful and beneficial for my life and for the life of those around me? How am I going to ground it? So with Pisces, we swim and with Virgo, we anchor. We got to bring it into a place where it's not just in our, in this you know, some, some will say it's like this spiritual, um, like Pisces is a mystic and a spiritual seeker and one who sees the oneness. But if we only stay there, then in a way it creates a by, it, it, it causes us to bypass actual reality because if we live in a world, in reality, there is, there's differences and differences make a difference. And it's not, um, it, it, of course, there's problematic in, in the differences, but there's also a beautiful, like that's where the beauty of, of life is, right? Venus isn't Mercury and Neptune and Saturn are different and I am different from you. And there's also, we are also a part of the same thing. So different, differentiation doesn't mean separation. Differentiation is how we get to keep expanding, how we get to keep exploring, how we get to be also real with ourselves. And when we recognize differences, that's actually where we know now that's in, in recognizing differences is where we get to do anti-racist work. It's in recognizing differences where we get to uh, dive very deeply into activism or post-activism, into this, these places where we get to sit with the problematics, with our own, <laughs> our own issues, with the way that our own issues um, um, emerge from the problematics of society, of the systems we live in, and in the way that we even add to the problematics. And we get to you know, with Pisces, there's a tendency to turn ourselves ourselves away from it and into, oh, it's all just one peace and love. I'm going to smoke a little something and disappear into the ether. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating. Yes, that's that's kind of like the, in a way, the shadow of the of the <laughs> of the light of Pisces. But if we are to do this work of of deep merging with our interconnectedness, it needs to be in relationship to the way that interconnectedness doesn't mean sameness, right? Doesn't, oh, it's all the same. I hear that in spiritual uh, circles all the time, this idea that, oh, like, oh, essentially the, all, all the teachings say the same thing. No, they, they don't. There's major, like there's a big difference in differences. And that's where we get to do the depth of work, where we get to explore more of what is possible, where we, where we sit with the complexity and the paradox of life, where we sit with the ambiguity, where things are, you know, layered and they have more than one truth to them. So when we play with the axis of Pisces and Virgo inside ourselves and in society, because for me, I think that we got to do inner work, but the inner work has to be in relationship with society because we're a relational being and not just with society of humans, but with, with, with the whole of existence. We, we got to do the work in both ways because, hey, we're breathing beings, right? T take a breath with me right now for a moment. Ah, I feel so good to breathe. <laughs> right? A deep breath in where you allow the environment to flow into you. Whether you like it or not, it's going to flow in. And where you, as you exhale, touch the space that you are a part of. We are always in relationship. So our inner work 
is never going to, A, it's never going to be complete, and B, it's never going to be not in relationship with that which surrounds you. Plants, animals, humans, issues, problems, and gifts, right? So we're always intertwined. And this access of Virgo and Pisces invites us to play and work in the field of what, where, where, how can I take an expansive vision on the issue, on the situation, on where I am in life, on what, what the world is going through right now, and how am I going to ground it and give it, give it um, a structure where it can breathe and move and change and live. You know, Pisces is a, um, um, it's a water sign, right? So it is very much in the liquidity of, of our bodies and of our lives in the way that our, like our bodies are full of liquid, right? When, a, when the body dies, it, it dries up, the, liquid, the liquids dry up. We're liquidy beings, but we're also earthly beings. We have a, the liquids take form. They become earth. They become Virgo. They become the, the, the structure that, that, that is needed in order to hold the experience. So water, you know, it's very often we hear water takes the shape of its container and that is true and that is beautiful. So what, what container do we want to give the waters of our imagination, the, the liquidity of our dreams, of what we what we're what we wish for what we're seeing for ourselves and for each other what we're desiring right what can what container what cup what bowl what cauldron will we give it in order for it to become um, man manifest right in order for it to become form and shape because if it doesn't take form and shape then then it stays again in that in those ethereal realms and then how do we how do we then also allow because water doesn't only take the shape of its container it's also changing the shape of the container over a longer period of time right we know that water can smooth can create a smoother shape for a rock we know that water over a long period of time changes the shape of 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 something that is solid. So water changes the shape of its container. So how do we also let, because again, it's the relationality of things, how do we let, how do we let ourselves be changed by the experience that we have? What kind of vessel are we going to become in order to hold the experiences that flow through us? And how will we also be, the vessel is receptive, right? It's got to receive the experience and the information and the knowledge and the, and the other and the self. But then how do we also stay receptive through the process so that the experience can also change us? Because a, a vessel has a boundary, right? So and boundaries are very important and Virgo gives us this, um, this very important um, remembrance that we got to create clear, clear boundaries and become clear channels. But then how do we also not immune ourselves to experiences and allow ourselves to be touched, to be, dare I say it, triggered so that we are changed by love. If, if an experience doesn't change us, what's the fucking point of it? Right? We have to let ourselves be changed by how life is moving through us or else what's the point? But then we, we want to also harness our power and know how to show up to it so that we show up to it with agency, with choice, with our empowerment and, and know how to direct it. So we want to do both. At least I do. Maybe you do too. So let's take another couple of breaths together to bring that into our bodies. You can put your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your belly and your eyes can be open or you can close your eyes, whatever, whatever feels 
resourceful for you right now. And feel for a moment as your hands touch your body, the boundary of your skin. Let your eyes soften. Let your breath flow in the way that it does. You don't need to direct it quite yet. Just pay attention to how it's moving. Notice its natural flow. And you know, even the boundary of our skin is semi, semi-permeable. It's not closed off. There are pores. Our skin breathes the environment. And so breathe into where you are in your life right now. And let yourself co-mingle with the experience as you also invite yourself to consider what kind of structures, what kind of constructs might support you and others in whatever it is that your life is dealing with, moving with, moving through right now. And breathe into your strengths, the ones that can support this building, this Virgo-like meticulous construction of structures with a softness and the receptivity and the kind of release that Pisces offers because Virgo can be super perfectionist. And so Pisces invites compassion. Pisces feels the pain of the world. And so as it offers, as we offer compassion and understanding toward what the world is going to, through and what others are going through, can we turn that toward ourselves as well? And let the waters of Pisces wash a bit of the perfectionist edge of Virgo. And breathe so that you can anchor in your capacity to be the vessel and the agent. And so that you can also be flexible and adaptable, changing with the waters of the experience. And then with your hands over your heart and your belly like that, offer yourself the message of support that you need right now from yourself. And as you breathe, receive it. And as you breathe, let it commingle with your environment. Let it touch the way that you are a part of something more than yourself, more than what you call you as an individual.
and then softly bring your hands together in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra. Anjali is the vessel of the heart's deepest offering. So the mudra is a receptive vessel that can receive into it the qualities and energies that you are generating. And so if you're generating an offering for yourself and for more than yourself in this moment, let that also arrive in the conduit, in the channel, in the vessel of your hands. And thank you so, so much for joining me on this full moon. And I hope to see you soon. If you like this video, this moment together, put a like on it, will you? And share it with your people and subscribe to this channel so that you can get more moon moments and practices and conversations that can support your life in ways that are paradox uh, respectful. <laughs> and subscribe to our mailing list over on Mama Mandala. Dot com going to put a link in the description of the video. All right. Thanks, my dears. Have a beautiful full moon day. Mwah.